Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alfred Avenue, and I'm excited to bring you guys another College Football 25 video. On July 2nd, we are going to be getting the Dynasty uh, deep dive breakdown. And so I thought I would kind of go through a couple different types of dynasties that I think would be fun to play um, and to kind of go over what each of those looks like. Picking your dynasty team can be overwhelming for sure. Um, and doing it before the game has even released where you can even look at the players is even more so. Uh, there's so much pressure to pick the right team because you have to go through and, and essentially pick the team that you're going to be using for at least a season. And you kind of want to make sure that you use your time and, and pick the right team effectively. There's 134 teams and they all have cool traditions and players and play styles and jerseys and all these new abilities and menus and the game is back after 11 years and I don't want to mess it up from the jump and ah! How do you decide who to use? What team to take back to greatness, to greatness, through greatness, in greatness, around greatness? Then there's hoping that you make the right decision once you do start your dynasty and hope that you don't have to start a new one immediately. You guys get it. It's stressful. It's a lot. Anyways, in this video, hopefully I can help to ease some of those concerns and kind of make your choice a little bit more simple. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you all a few different types of dynasties that I feel every player uh, should be thinking about doing and help you to pick the team that's right for you. There are five main types of dynasties, and I've got an honorable mention for some historic slash story line dynasties um, that I think will be fun to play. Uh, many teams can fit within multiple of these different types, uh, but I'll go over some of the typical teams for each scenario. These five types of dynasties include your favorite team dynasty, worst to first, a rebuild dynasty, you've got your up and coming dynasties, as well as your powerhouse playthroughs. Now, I'm not going to tell you which team to play with because I would hate for you to pick a team that I told you to pick and you just hate the playthrough. Uh, but I am going to present you all with some scenarios that, that you'll hopefully find interesting and help you to pick your team so that you can take on becoming a dynasty with that team. I am going to tell you, however, which teams I'm going to pick and kind of explain why I'm going to pick them so that hopefully it'll help you choose yours along the way. Let's get into breaking down these different types of dynasties. To start with, we're going to take a look at the your favorite team dynasty. Um, for me, obviously, this is my Auburn Tigers, War Eagle. I can't wait to take the position of head coach there on the prettiest little village on the plains, to sing War Eagle when we get touchdowns, and to chant Badagheta throughout the game. Flying the Eagle to start home games and getting the home crowd jumping for swag surf while watching Albie get hype in front of the student section. I want to stick it to Bama and give it to Georgia every year and make Auburn the school that represents the state of Alabama, pulling in the best recruits, winning championships and shipping those players in the first round of the NFL draft. Since this obviously is not going to be happening in real life, I would like to do it in game. I'm sure you all have stories like this with your own teams and will enjoy taking uh, this year's players onto the field and try to give them glory in game that they may not experience in real life and on the field. In our group online dynasty, we're talking about each of us taking our favorite teams and playing with them. To create more of a challenge, we may choose from the next type. Your worst to first. You can take the worst to first idea literally and go in and use like literally Kennesaw State or Kent State who are ranked 134 and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be an achievement for taking the worst team to the national championship the first year. Um, but taking this team with like a hope and a dream after going 1-11 last year um, would be a lot of fun but it is usually really challenging. But typically the worst to first is more of like a mentality thing. It's going to be a team in the lower than 100 rankings in the overall rankings and in the past typically it would mean like a team that's like a one star maybe two star setting a cap at like that three star prestige these are teams that have little to no history no tradition of winning no success but you want to pick a team with a little character or flair or at least cool jerseys or maybe a star player um, that you've been hearing about this is a save where you'll start very much at the bottom and grind your way to the top by trying to go 500 um, get, you know, winning more than one game a season, getting into a bowl game, moving towards winning a bowl game, then trying to win your conference championship, then with the expanded playoff, fighting for a bid to play against the best. Eventually, you'll definitely try and get into winning the national championship, but it's definitely a start from the bottom and move up. This is definitely a more long-term type project, uh, but they're always my favorite, and, and I like the story building of creating um, a team and taking them from bottom to top. Um, and to me, they create the most fun storylines while also being the most rewarding. Like when, obviously they were an FCS team, but when Appalachian State beat Michigan as an FCS school, 
or ULM beat Alabama back in the day or Jacksonville State beat Florida or, or Ole Miss or even um, obviously New Mexico State beat Auburn last year. I got to keep my own team in there. Um, these are the storylines you look for to create chaos in the in the higher rankings while also progressing your team throughout the season. Um, these are the storylines that you look to create and be the author of. Your conferences of choice in this type of dynasty are going to typically be one of these. You've got your Middle America Conference, you've got your Conference USA, Mountain West, the American Athletic Conference, or the Sun Belt. Because these are the non-Power 5 conferences and represent the type of team that we talked about. There are also fun worst-to-first playthroughs um, in your bigger conferences with teams like Vanderbilt in the SEC or Iowa State in the Big 12, Purdue or Illinois in the Big 10, or Wake Forest, Pitt, or Virginia from the ACC. This type of worst-to-first is picking a bad team that's kind of a hen that has wolves in the coop, um, facing off against the best teams in the nation, but falling way short below their level of competition. Um, you essentially want to avoid using the best teams and best conferences um, and grow both the team prestige and the conference around you by elevating them through your success. Um, obviously, using like a Vanderbilt within the SEC isn't necessarily going to improve the level of play in the SEC, but if you take a team like Kent State or Akron um, in the MAC conference, getting them to be better and improving your level of play can potentially challenge um, your the teams around you to help build the level of that conference. Your job is to take over and wake the potential sleeping giant and bring them out of obscurity into greatness. It's a cupcakes to champions, a losers to legends, a gutter to greatness, a worst in the game to the best in the game type dynasty. Some of the best choices uh, for this type of dynasty are going to obviously be the bottom bottom tier teams. You've got Kennesaw State, you've got Kent State, you've got the Akron Zips, you have Nevada, you've got University of Louisiana Monroe, you have UMass, the Minutemen, um, which were a new team in 2014. You've got, you've got ECU, who had a good run in the late 2000s, early 10s, um, that you know are definitely in obscurity now, but they've got really cool purple jerseys and could be fun to play. UConn, you know, another team that had an okay run back in like the 2008 time frame um, and who are just falling off big time. Um, Buffalo, they're always bad, but they have a cool mascot and cool blue colors. Sam Houston, a new team uh, to the FBS. Obviously, I think they've been around for like one or two years. Um, they went three and nine last year. The list goes on. Based on these teams and the, and the way that we've described this, um, I'm most likely going to select Kennesaw State. They seem to be the coolest of these teams to select. Um, they have interesting stories and pretty cool colors and whatnot. And it looks like college football has already paid attention to them. If you saw the Sights and Sounds video, Kennesaw State was featured, the Owls. Uh, but Kennesaw State is going to be joining the FBS for the first time and should be a fun team to, to build a dynasty with in College Football 25. Uh, but with questions at O-line and at quarterback, this should be a challenging yet fun team to build with. They're seated in the Conference USA and are located in Georgia, a hotbed for blue chip talent. Um, that should help them to grow over time or to get you know, a, a big recruit in the first year that can help springboard them into being a better team. The next kind of dynasty we're going to talk about is a rebuild. These are typically the teams that are usually in a major conference and have seen success in fairly recent years or, and have tasted glory either in their conference or with a national title, uh, but are currently falling on hard times. Or they've just fallen short of the really high standards that their fans and traditions require. These teams are underdogs in conferences that produce the best talent and the highest standards of winning. And your job is to take these teams from the stagnation that they're currently experiencing to the heights of greatness. Nebraska of the 1980s and 90s were a defensive powerhouse with some of the best running backs to ever touch the field, winning national championships in 94, 95, and 97. Um, they're definitely a far cry from the program that they once were. Can you help bring this team back to greatness? Can you use your past influence to help garner success and draw the best talent to you? Away from the big dogs and rebuild your team to the powerhouse they should be. Other teams that fit within this category are going to be your Florida Gators who have kind of fallen on tough times in the SEC East. You've got Baylor, who are really struggling this year, but had success with Robert Griffin III winning a Heisman Trophy. You've got your Tennessees, who every year they're going to win the national championship and end up going 7-5. and five. Um, You've got Miami, who have fallen on hard times uh, there in the ACC, who used to be a powerhouse winning a national championship. I, was, I believe it was in 2002, 2003. Um, but going back to back and I think losing to Ohio State uh, in one of those. 
you've got UCF, the the Golden Knights uh, there in Florida, um, you know, who have a claimed national championship, but maybe you want to come and take them and rebuild them and and get them an, an undisputed playoff national championship. TCU, the Horned Frogs, who were, you know, a big team in the Big 12 for quite a while, obviously, they came from the Mountain West, but have a lot of history. Um, and you've got, obviously, Auburn, um, kind of one of the underdogs um, that is is in this position. Um, they won a national championship in 2010, went to the national championship, lost to Florida State in 2013, and have been on hard times following the Gus Malzahn and Brian Harson era, stepping into a new, uh, new phase with... Um, with Hugh Freeze. Maybe you can replace Hugh Freeze and, and take them on back to greatness. We've got Colorado, a team that is filled with talent and coached by by primetime, um, falling 4-9 and nine last year or 4-8, and eight, uh, just not looking good in general. Maybe you can take that talent and actually harness them to be successful. You've got Michigan State there in the Big Ten who have kind of always been the little brother to Michigan. If this offends you, I apologize. Um, but as an Auburn fan, I can relate greatly, and Michigan State would be my favorite team in the Big Ten because of that. Of these schools and outside of Auburn, because Auburn's on this list, but they're obviously my favorite team because they technically fit in both of these categories, favorite team spot, and definitely meet the requirements for a rebuild. Um, but outside of Auburn, I would choose either Miami or Michigan State. Uh, Miami has a really cool history of domination uh, back in the day um, and, and are currently a middling team in the ACC, but they have really cool jerseys, a sick mascot, not to mention the number seven rated offense, according to College Football 25. Um, even though they're only ranked 47th in the college, uh, the CBS FBS Division One rankings, um, they're kind of on the upper end of this rebuild. Um, you, you know, you don't want to to go too high in the rankings with one of these because you want to like actually experience the rebuild process um and they're definitely on the upper end of the power curve for a rebuild while michigan state would be more towards like the bottom of that rebuild archetype they're ranked 68th in uh, espn's football power rankings currently um, and they're a similar team to Auburn in spirit and in brotherly rivalry with their in-state enemy, Michigan. Um, but they're a part of a big and powerful Big Ten conference um, and could see success early in the dynasty with a couple of key wins and some good recruiting. Outside of the worst of first, this is one of the more fun dynasty types because you can kind of use, it's a decent team, kind of get you warmed into the game before getting into like, obviously the worst of first is like really tough. Uh, because of just how bad they are. Um, but that leads us into the next type of dynasty, which is an up and coming dynasty. With a rebuild, the next type is pretty similar. You know, your rebuild teams are, you know, they're still in a good conference, but they they have some good players. They just haven't been able to meet the standards that their fans or expectations that have been put on them. They're just not achieving that. The up and comings are the type of teams that are just below a lot of these rebuild type teams and they're kind of exceeding expectations right now they're coming in and they're supposed to be you know a, a mac team or like a, a american athletic conference team and they end up going 13 or 11 and 1 or something like that and winning a big bowl game um this dynasty uh is for the type of player who wants the challenge of playing as a team that's not historically known for being a powerhouse but has shown some flashes of greatness recently they're most likely not the biggest schools in their states and will have to compete with the big dogs to survive for talent and for wins. And they'll be competing against the best for their state's local talent. This one will most likely prove to be a big recruiting challenge, but with some success in the playoff, I think a team can begin to build a reputation that makes players want to come there. These teams are bound to be great options for the transfer portal players. You know, those freshmen who are mad about not getting starting time um, at their big school that they went to or a jaded senior who lost his spot to a freshman. I think these teams could be some of the most fun types of dynasties to play with teams like Jacksonville State University. You've got Tulane who are up and coming and I believe are ranked in the top 25. Um, and Kansas who are a kind of bad Big 12 team who have kind of turned their program around in recent years. Um, you've got Liberty who are a former FCS recently into FBS team that Hugh Freeze helped to recruit and build um, towards, I think they're in the top 25 as well. Um, you've got James Madison, you got Appalachian State, the Mountaineers who if I hadn't done the NCAA 14 dynasty with, I would have done Appalachian State just because I really like their history and they're just like a really fun cool school um with you know a cool mascot as well as like a history of winning cool big clutch games 
Um, you've got Troy here seated in Alabama, Wyoming, who helped produce some good quarterback talent, um, but are not necessarily known for being great. You've got Ohio, the Bobcats, who are in a terrible MAC conference, but I believe went 11-0 last year um, and just kind of smoked the rest of the teams around them. Um, obviously, with a team like that, you're looking to kind of move them. Sorry, they were 10-3. and uh, Kind of move them from that mediocrity into being a team that can contend for national championships. But for me, uh, I'm going to be choosing Jacksonville State from this list. Um, it's a school that's close to home for me here in Alabama. And it's a school that my fiance attended and many of my friends have attended, not to mention I think my dad went there. They're definitely on an upswing playing upset to teams like Florida State and Ole Miss a few years back and have seen some success at an FCS level. Um, they have cool jerseys. They're like black and red um, and have some cool white jerseys as well um, and are a decent team going into 2024. And who doesn't want to say go Cox? They're a small school in a state that's known for producing elite college talent and for producing national championships left and right. Mostly from one source, obviously, but I digress. With some grit and patience, Jacksonville State could see quick success in the Conference USA, and you could move them later to the SEC to become one of the regional powerhouses located in Alabama. The final type of dynasty is not my favorite, but I know some people just like to play with the best teams and they don't necessarily want to spend all the time recruiting and they don't want to take the time to like really grind out um, a dynasty and they want to come in and play with the best, be the best and just rack up trophies and um, from the get go and, and just get there as quick as possible. For those players, this is a this is what I like to call a powerhouse playthrough. Basically, any top 10 team or a team that's like six star or five star prestige or a perennial powerhouse even if they're having a down year. This is a good option if you don't have a ton of time but want to play with like all of those best players and the best teams and drive around a Ferrari versus, you know, a 2001 Toyota Camry. These these powerhouse teams are are these powerhouse teams are your teams like Michigan, Washington, Texas, Bama, Georgia, Florida State who can also be a rebuild but they have been a typical powerhouse. Oregon, you've got Ohio State University and Notre Dame, as well as Clemson and Oklahoma. I personally am going to steer away from playing a powerhouse playthrough. I don't judge people for playing them. It's just not my preferred like way to play. Like I want to take my team from the bottom and then build them into a powerhouse so that I can then do that. But usually by the time I get to that point, I want to start another new like bad dynasty, if that makes sense. I'm personally going to steer away from playing a powerhouse playthrough, but really only because my team is not included in that upper echelon of teams to choose from in College Football 25. But if I were forced to choose, I would probably go outside the normal big winners. Bama is obviously a no and never will be. Um, I didn't even buy NCAA 2012 because Mark Ingram was on the cover. Uh, and OSU and Michigan, to me, they're a little too cliche or just like too good. I, I would still, this is just kind of innate in me to choose like the challenge out of the powerhouse playthroughs. Um, so I would most likely go with Washington. They're a legacy of Pac-12 greatness that have been unable to secure a national championship, but have been just like on the edge of that for a few years. Um, and to solidify the status as a dynasty, uh, this will be a lot of fun to take them from like doing really great to being elite and becoming a powerhouse dynasty type program. Um, it'd be cool to take them and really control the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast in regards to recruiting, uh, but just in general beating all those teams uh, with a high power offense this year uh, they're they're ranked I think at like 25 exactly in the top 25 but losing their head coach to Bama this looks like to me the funnest prospect for a powerhouse playthrough um, that you could really make your own with an honorable mention here before I list off the five types of dynasties again um, this is the return to glory historic slash honorable mention list um, to me, these are teams with really cool backstories or pretty intense falls from grace. Um, there are multiple programs like this, but I think the two that stick out in my mind um, are, first of all, uh, Southern Methodist, SMU, taking the death penalty in the 90s, um, and they have really not seen that level of success since then. Going from the Pony Express to My Little Pony uh, due to the Pony Excess era, um, it was not what they envisioned at all following 
that greatness in the 90s. Uh, they've definitely fallen into hard times, and to take them and build them would be a lot of fun. Plus, they have really cool, really pretty jerseys, as well as a, as a, as a pretty awesome stadium. The other team that I think would be in this kind of like historic slash uh, return to glory would be kind of a weird one, but uh, with Rutgers, uh, they took part in the first ever college football game against Princeton um, in 1869 and came away victorious with a score of six to four and won the national championship in that first year, 1869. Now, obviously, in modern times, they have taken a bit of a tumble, uh, but they essentially helped to invent the sport as we see it today. And it's a cool callback to times long gone. With all of these options and all these different types of dynasty, hopefully I was able to help narrow down some choices or at least give you some ideas um, for starting your own dynasties. Again, these five main types of dynasties are going to be your favorite team, your worst to first dynasty, your rebuild, your up and coming, and your powerhouse playthrough. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. Hopefully this video will give you a little bit of insight in how you want to pick your own dynasty and help to narrow down your selection for your dynasty. You don't have to use the teams that I'm picking, but hopefully me narrowing it down for you guys will help you to choose your own. Obviously, these are not the only types of dynasties that you can pick from or choose from, uh, but they are the main types of dynasties that I had essentially envisioned in my mind over the past 11 years through playing in NCAA 14 and since playing since 2003. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like um, and comment the team, get in the comments to uh, let me know which team you're gonna select for your main dynasty. And if you wanna see more in the future, please subscribe to the channel. Thank y'all so much. See ya!